Hello everybody, Scott Golden with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel here. And we continue the World Class Championship Wrestling Review Series. We enter August, August 7th, 1982 with this uh, particular uh, recording. And um, we have up until August available in the archive. There's about 24, 25, 26 episodes, something like that. As the archive for 1982 is less complete than I would like, but... We are getting to a interesting point in time in the archive. I'm uh, up to November right now, and without a doubt, uh, I can see where 1983 is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we open with Brian Adidas discussing the main event, the main event of this week's particular episode being a uh, tag team match with Al Madrill and Kerry Von Erich versus... The Superfly and King Kong Bundy. Madrill is, uh, I'm sorry, Adidas is not really ready for this particular role. He is uh, struggling in his ability to deliver a promo, but only about a year into his career, so that's understandable. Uh, we then move to a match with the great Kabuki versus Roberto Ernesto. Um, match is intended and successfully is a showcase for Kabuki. Kabuki, who has been with the uh, world-class promotion now for the majority, uh, if not the entire year of 1982, still not growing um, tired or, you know, lame. He's really been protected very well, obviously being part of Gary Hart's stable helping a lot of the martial arts strikes. He's always kept to look strong in that Every time he takes punishment, he's booked to come back at the right time to where even when he's in there with a Von Erich or he's in there with, uh, um, you know, Bugsy McGraw or whomever, he always is coming back with enough strikes where he looks competitive. Um, they are moving him towards the, uh, I believe at this point, the Shinbreaker finish, if not right soon after here. But he gets a knockout uh, a kick and then several strikes in this particular match and gets a, a very decisive victory where only the uh, match is about a minute or two long before going very far. Uh, we move into Jose Lothario addressing the great Kabuki, addressing how dangerous he is, giving him challenges and the like. I mean, Lothario at this point, obviously a guy who uh, the Texas area in various iterations of promotions, be it Southwest with the Blanchard, World Class, or whomever else, has really built around for the last several years, and that doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon here. Uh, Frank Dusick is up next with... Um, Brian Adias. Adias, as mentioned before, training with the Von Erichs, which giving him the rub of training with the Von Erichs is helpful in that it gives him a certain level of cachet of instant credibility that a lot of guys don't have. Um, Dusick is a guy who can carry just about anyone to at least a passable match. So if you're in there with Frank Dusick and you can't go, then there's a problem. Um, obviously, the collegiate style is utilized by Adias quite a bit here. Uh, we actually see him out wrestling the heel on the ground early. Uh, several minutes have gotten out of an arm bar, which obviously you couldn't do in 2020. But here, uh, what's amazing to me is the crowd will stay for an arm bar for two or three minutes. And uh, Dusik, we see him getting frustrated a few minutes in. Rolls to the outside, comes back in. Uh, just tremendous psychology. I would still maintain that there are holes you can utilize today that are different than what we were using in the 80s, but still same principles. And coming back to them three, four, five times a match is completely doable. Um, a lot of people would say that the pacing isn't there. But something as simple as a short knee to the midsection, which has been used since the beginning of time with wrestling. I mean, everyone knows what it's like to have the wind knocked out of you, and it, that's the tr the truth of wrestling is relatability, um, you know. And then the other thing, too, that I really like in this match, 
both guys, babyface and heel, tend to be going for uh, pinning attempts more so than average. Uh, there's a hanging suplex attempt by Dusik uh, that leads to an awkward attempt at an Oklahoma roll there. And Dusik is able to utilize uh, the ropes and some leverage to gain a victory. So it makes sense for him to have defeated his uh, challenger, or his, yeah, his challenger on this particular day. Dusik is uh, tired of being disrespected, picks up the microphone and lets the crowd know this. Then we see Bugsy McGraw and his clown, for lack of a better term, getting a promo about uh, how Bugsy's going to take over the world. Wild Bill Irwin and Bugsy McGraw is up next. Uh, Irwin, who is still your Texas heavyweight champion against uh, McGraw. McGraw, certainly not a guy that you're going to build a company around, but at the same time, when you're trying to begin the marketing to kids, which I think by 1982-83, everyone kind of had a hint that that's where WWF was going. They may not have known it. I certainly don't think that anybody could have predicted the level at which they do it by 84, 85, but kind of people knew that things were changing, and so promotions had more of a focus on uh, working towards kids. Armand Hussein on the outside, protecting his interest in um, Bill Irwin. Uh, one thing I like about this particular match is Bugsy McGraw keeps things so simple, yet has the crowd on their feet the whole time. Something as simple as sidestepping a guy after a lockup or sending him to the outside and then making fun of him for it. Just super, super simple stuff that I think could still work today in an independent setting. And I think uh, those simple spots could be reconditioned into the current uh, marketplace. I, I don't, on a national level, I don't know that it wouldn't take a year or two to do it, but I think there's a certain level of overestimation of the importance of high spots in current wrestling that um, uh, I would I would challenge anybody to keep to keep going with uh, the finish of the match here uh, sees the use of um, some sort of bucket of feathers I believe uh, by like, almost like a trash bucket, uh, by Bugsy McGraw from his outside clown friend, and he's up in the face, and, and Bugsy gets his victory, and he's obviously happy and elated with that. Irwin, not so much, but anyway, uh, we move on to a promo with uh, Al Madrill, Kerry Von Eric. Of course, Kerry is literally, at this point, about a week away, from the uh, World Championship match with Ric Flair, the heavyweight championship match, Bundy holding the um, Texas Tag Team Championships, Armand Hussein going on and on about how the Von Erichs need to be worried, everybody needs to be worried, and uh, Bundy looks to be a million bucks. Bundy is impressed with his new partner, the Superfly. Again, I still don't know how the Superfly name is able to be used in two territories at the same time, but that's not for me to figure out, I guess. Um, and that is our main event as we go to Madrill and uh, Kerry Von Erich versus Superstar and, uh, or Superfly and King Kong Bundy. Obviously, the, the word is that uh, uh, Bundy and Superfly, with their size and all this, will be unbeatable. Um, very basic match. Ric Flair is at ringside watching. Um, I don't know when this is taped, but would assume Flair had to be in town for something else anyway, or maybe he was doing just a small loop. Um, I, I love the fact that even from ringside, Flair is taking notes on Kerry's weaknesses. It's something small, but I think, um, uh, when you want to portray a fight, what would a fighter do? Fighters going to look for weaknesses and might write them down. Um, very slow match. Madrill taking the majority of the punishment. Obviously, not wanting Kerry to be the one to take an abundance of punishment literally uh, a week before his big, the biggest match of his career. Weird to see Bundy working a hold as we see Bundy working an armbar for quite a few minutes here. This match is really 
as far as main events go, not the best, but it serves a purpose, I think, to give uh, Kerry Von Eric an outlet there. Uh, and um, now the Superfly comes in, and then the Superfly comes in. He um, uses power once Kerry's tagged in. Kerry fights from underneath for a few minutes, as uh, one is wont to do. Madrill and Kerry work uh, some double team maneuvers along the way. Flair's still shown a time or two, kind of taking the notes and, and then uh, almost ready to walk away as if he's seen enough. Uh, Flair does uh, stay at ringside, though, and he's kind of wanting to get involved, but not really wanting to get involved. Armand Hussein and Flair do share a glance or two. Um, Flair getting more agitated as the match goes on. It's almost as if he's taking... Kerry not being taken care of yet as a personal offense. Um, and we do see a uh, use of the Iron Claw. Bundy is out cold almost thanks to the Claw. And they have a hard time getting uh, Kerry off. But uh, uh, Bundy is not unconscious. He just was uh, selling the Claw for quite a bit there. Um and I think, I think the use of the claw here against a guy as big as Bundy, if, if it works on Bundy, it can work on Flair. Amazingly, Kerry, with a huge body slam to defeat King Kong Bundy. Uh, I don't know if uh, Kerry's the first one to slam Bundy here. I don't think so. Might have been Harley Race in the same general area. As a matter of fact, I think I, I watched that episode not that long ago, but... Um, um, certainly Kerry slamming uh, Bundy, a big uh, effort in the go-home show here, and uh, Flair and uh, Kerry square off. Flair, you know, talks about how Kerry is the biggest thing in Texas right now. Uh, he is not willing to, to let go of his championship. He's uh, going to be champion after things. He acknowledges Carry to be a good challenger, but not the best challenger. And that's how we close the program. Uh, one week from today is the, or actually one week and one day, so eight days from this episode will be the meeting between Carrie and Flair. Uh, and I will say, go out of your way to watch that match. We'll talk about why when we get there in a couple of weeks. But uh, in any event, this has been your World Class Championship Wrestling Review. I encourage you to check out the others. Till next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment, everybody.